Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. This is the 1238th day of continuous webinar conducted by International Forum for Promoting Homeopathy. Today, our guest is Dr. Mahadeen, MD. Let us wait. Let us begin the session with one minute silent prayer. Thank you all. As you all know, the International Forum for Promoting Homeopathy is conducting a regular webinar since last 1,237 days. And we have three sessions. 7 to 8 p.m. we have English Hindi session. From 8 to 9 we have international session in English. And from 9 to 10, the local language session in Malayal. And today, we have a wonderful guest in uh, Dr. Mohuddin and sir is has completed his MD and was former professor and HOD Department of Case Taking and Repertory DND uh, Homeopathic Medical College, Kolkata. Formerly officer in charge and faculty of homeopathy in West Bengal University of Health Science, Kolkata. He was a guide and examiner in Musafir University, uh, Bihar. He has published two books, The Homeopathic Treatment Cures Benign Tertian Malaria, presented in the uh, Indian Science Congress, uh, that is on the 88th session. The second presentation was on Morbid Changes of Estericia Cholae by Common Homeopathic Medicine Prescribed by for Urinary Infections. As you all know, uh, Sir has worked for homeopathy to educate uh, not only to the students, but also to the homeopathic fraternity, as well as uh, to the uh, homeopathic lovers also. So we have uh, the, all these uh, uh, people together in this forum. So the presentation is in that way. So today I, we will be discussing one of the important subjects, that is upper respiratory tract infection in pediatric age groups, a uh, homeopathic approach. As you all know, uh, the, uh, most of the acute cases are coming to homeopathic doctors nowadays, uh, particularly the fever begins with the viral uh, disorders and all those things. Uh, we have wonderful remedies and uh, most of the upper respiratory tract, uh, tract uh, diseases settle down in the uh, our respiratory tract. So, uh, in pediatric cases, uh, we know that uh, more, uh, so many people are patients are admitted in hospitals uh, for these conditions. But even a very small use or a few doses of homeopathic medicine can uh, save home, uh, these children within uh, without any hospitalization and with, uh, within the hospital home treatment. So, let us uh, begin the session with the. Uh, Sir, and uh, let us invite our beloved guest, uh, Professor Mohadin Sir, to this stage. Sir, we can present for the next uh, uh, 45 minutes and then, then we will have a discussion of the same. Sahani, sir, 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 Doctor, Doctor sir. sir has joined. Uh, you, can, you have to make him the uh, co host. He has joined in the name of Mohiu. Mohiu. M O H I U. M O H I U. Uh, Doctor uh, Mohidun, sir, you kindly unmute yourself and uh, open your video also, sir. Doctor Mohidun, sir, are you able to listen to us? Doctor Mohidun, sir. Yes, 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 sir. I have seen, sir. Yes, sir, uh, please unmute. Kindly unmute yourself, sir. Kindly unmute yourself, sir. Mohidu. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, M O H I U. Uh. Yes, sir. I have made uh, made him both, sir. Uh, doctor, uh, please open your video, sir, so that we can. Sir, up, uh, please open your video. Uh, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. yes, sir. Okay, now you are visible, sir. You are visible. And open yes, your. <coughs> sir, you are welcome to the session, sir. You can. You can start, sir. Sir. Thanks <clears throat> to the introduction. My best regards to Professor Dr. M. K. Sahani. He was my TPG teacher. And thanks to all of you who have joined this meeting 
first called me to say something about homeopathy. It is slide show to the other. Uh, you, you can make him make the slide show, sir. Then it can sir, sir. on the full screen, sir. Slide, slide show on the top of your. Uh, I, I am uh, trying, sir. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh. Yeah. Sir, on the top line, on the top line, yes, correct. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I've got it. Begin. Yeah, it is now okay, sir. Again, thanks to everybody. My topic is upper respiratory tract infection in pediatric age group and their homeopathic approach. Before starting my topic, I would like to I would like to discuss about the respiratory disorders that may be obstructive or restrictive. Obstructive, that is obstruction in inner side of tracheobronchial tree and restrictive pressure point from outside of the lung. This obstructive type, uh, we may uh, remember emphysema, chronic bronchitis, bronchial asthma, bronchiectasis, etc., etc. And this pressure point from outside of the lung and disease of lung parenchyma, restrictive, can be discussed like disease of the chest wall, neuromuscular disorder, disease by lung parenchyma. Disease of the chest wall, obesity, kyphosclerosis, rib fracture, neuromuscular disorder, diaphragmatic palsy, severe cervical spondylosis, myosin agravis, etc. And that can be confirmed diagnosis by HRCT. Disease by lung parenchyma, intestinal, interstitial lung disease, lung abscess, lung fibrosis, etc. etc. Now, regarding the anatomy, regarding the anatomical division of upper respiratory tract, the upper respiratory tract includes the nose and nasal passages, paranasal sinuses, the pharynx, and the portion of the larynx and above the vocal fold. In India, classification of pediatric age group can be described as zero to one month is born, one month to one year infant, one year to three year toddler, three year to six year preschool, six year to 12 year school life, school age child, and 12 year to 18 year adolescent. Nearly 50% of all pediatric consultations in industrialized countries are caused by respiratory tract infection. Acute respiratory tract infections are among the leading causes of childhood mortality, especially in developing countries. Their annual incidence per child decreases with age. 6.1 in children less than one year, 5.7 in children, is it one to two years? 4.7 in children is it 3 to 4 years, 3.5 in children is it 5 to 9 years, 
2.7 in children is it 15 to 14 year and 2.4 in children is it about 15 to 19 year upper respiratory tract infection represents the most common acute illness rates are highest in children younger than 5 years children who attend school or daycare are a large reservoir for upper respiratory tract infection and they transfer infection to those who care for them. Acute pharyngitis accounts for 1% of all ambulatory visits. The incidence of viral and bacterial pharyngitis peaks in children as it about 4 to 7 years. Now, this upper respiratory tract infection includes common cold, sinusitis, otitis media, pharyngitis, tonsillitis, laryngitis, epiglottis. Before discussing homeopathy approach, I would like to discuss in nutshell the signs and symptoms of each diseases. Like common cold, nasopharyngitis, inflammation of the nares, pharynx, hypopharynx, ebola, and tonsils, occurring mostly during winter, Epidemics is most common during cold months, which with a peak incidence in late winter to early spring. Humidity may also affect the prevalence of colds because most viral upper respiratory tract infection is in sweep in the low humidity characteristics of winter months. Etiology of common cold, rhinoviruses, RSV, coronavirus, Mixovirus. Bacterial cause of this is bacterial cause is very rare. Streptococci, staphylococci, diphtheria, peripatusis, etc. etc. Risk factors for upper respiratory tract infection. Very important point. Number one, contact. Close contact with the small children, such as school or daycare, increase the risk of upper respiratory tract infection. Travel. Exposure to large number of individuals of close settings increase exposure to respiratory pathogens. Environmental factors such as passive smoking and exposure to pollute. Immunocompromised conditions like splenectomy, HIV infections, immunosuppressive treatments. Very important is malnutrition. In developing countries like us, malnutrition is a very important factor for the upper respiratory tract infection, atopic status, lack of breastfeeding, cilia dyskinesia syndrome, or cystic fibrosis, upper airway trauma, etc. Anemia, rickets that can that uh, should be uh, explained. Now, common symptoms of our upper respiratory tract infections are nasal obstruction, congestion of nasal breathing. Sneezing, cough, anorexia, fever, foul breath, headache, adenoiditis. Inflammation of adenoid glands called adenoiditis. Adenoids are masses of lymphatic tissue that help the body to fight infection. Adenoids begin from the third month of fetal development fully formed by seven months. Palatine tonsils begin development in third month of fetal development. Acute adenoiditis. Symptoms include purulent rhinorrhea, nasal obstruction, fever, frequent complications like otitis media, recurrent acute, acute uh, adenoiditis. Chronic adenoiditis. Symptoms include persistent rhinorrhea, post-nasal drip, Male, male odorous breath, associated otitis media, acute pharyngitis, tonsillitis, viral cause and bacterial cause. Viral cause like adenoviruses, influenza viruses, HSV, e e EBV, infectious mononucleosis, bacterial cause, group A streptococci. Appro approximately 15% of all cases of pharyngitis. Group C and G streptococci, diseria gonori, etc. Acute tonsillitis. 
What are the signs and symptoms? Fever, sore throat, tender cervical limb adenopathy, dysphagia, erythematous tonsil with exudates, conjunctivitis, cough. This is more suggestive of a viral than bacterial etiology. Diarrhea, if associated with urinary upper respiratory tract infection, suggestive of viral etiology. Fever. Bacterial pharyngitis. This may be difficult to distinguish from viral pharyngitis. Physical findings that suggest a high risk of, for group of streptococcal disease are erythema, swelling of or exudates of the tonsil, temperature high or higher, tender anterior cervical nodes, and absence of conjunctivitis. Cough, common cold, which are suggestive of viral illness. Recurrent acute tonsillitis. Same sign and symptoms as acute tonsillitis, occurring in four to seven separate episodes per year. Otitis media. Inflammation of the middle ear may also involve mastoid, bacterious apex, peri labyrinth in ear cells. Acute otitis media, subacute otitis media, and chronic otitis media. Acute otitis media, three weeks course, subacute, three weeks to three months, and chronic otitis media, three months or longer. What are the clinical manifestations of otitis media? There's number one, fullness in the ear, severe pain, deafness, tinnitus, autophony, otoria. Ruptured ear drum. When too much fluid builds up in the middle ear, it can put pressure on the eardrum until it ruptures. Sign of ruptured eardrum include yellow, brown, or white fluid draining from the ear, etc. Symptoms pain in the ear, trouble hearing, high rise of fever, tugging or pulling at one or both ears, fluid drainage from the ears, loss of balance, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, congestion. Prevention of otitis media, very important, encouraging breastfeeding, avoiding exposure to passive smoke, teaching careful hand washing, limiting exposure to upper respiratory infections. Epiglottitis. Epiglottitis or supraglottitis is an inflammation of the epiglottis and or the supraglottic tissue surrounding the epiglottis, including the airy epiglottic folds, airy tin, tin, actinoid soft tissues, and occasionally the ebola. This condition is more found in children aged one to five years who present with a sudden onset of symptoms. What are the symptoms? Like sore throat, dysphagia, difficulty or pain, during swallowing, sensation of a lump in throat, loss of voice, fever, fatigue, or malaise. Sinusitis. Another problem, chronic maxillary sinusitis or frontal sinusitis. Etiology or risk factors, viral upper respiratory tract infection or nasal allergies, allergic rhinitis, anatomical abnormalities, etc., etc. Sinusitis. Approximately 5 to 13 percent of upper respiratory tract infection are complicated by bacterial sinusitis. Children are susceptible to serious sequelae from a complication of sinusitis, such as orbital cellulitis and intracranial complications, 3.7 to 11 percent of the total patients. Mm -hmm. Signs and symptoms. Piercing pain in the ear, which may be worse by lying down. Trouble hearing, fever, pulling at one or both ears, loss of balance, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Uh, in nutshell, I have discussed about the anatomy and signs and symptoms. I think my learned. Um, uh, Mm, friends, they all know this, uh, still I have discussed. 
Now let us come to the homeopathic approach, which is our vital uh, thing uh, of our topic. Firstly, I would like to discuss what are the different methods to reach the similimum. Whether it is a case of sinusitis, it is a case of tonsillitis, or it is a otitis media. We have to reach the similimum for cure of the patient. Now, what are the different methods? In different ways, we can reach the similimum, like totality, particular to general, general to particular, clinical, or organopathic, very important miasmatic and constitutional, keynotes or etiology. Let me allow to discuss in, in very short time, what are uh, these? This constitutional, whom I am. This I means I am with my environment. Different persons have different constitution. So we have to individualize the person. Individualization is a philosophy by which one person is distinguished from other mankind. Individualization is a piece of pivot of homeopathic therapy. <clears throat> Another thing is myism. Myism also is an important factor which may be considered for individualization both in acute disease and chronic disease. In acute disease, when acute disease occurs frequently, when indicated medicine fails, when genus epidemicus fails in epidemic diseases. In chronic disease, change of plan of treatment. Dr. Ortega said the myasmatic state is more important than pathological changes. According to Dr. Kane, one person repeatedly suffering from acute disease and physician is prescribing medicines like Nagbomica, Belladonna, Rastax, etc. But the patient suffering record. Because these acute manifestations are nothing but pre-indication of forthcoming chronic disease which needs myasmatic treatment. In case of sporadic epidemic or epidemic in Marcy Island, when acute medicine failed, need anti myasmatic treatment, especially Shora, sometimes syphilitic, footnote. Organ of medicine. <clears throat> now let us come to the totality. We all know that to cure a patient, we have to make a totality of the symptom. This totality doesn't mean quantitative totality. Patient has given hundreds of symptoms. Among these hundreds of symptoms, there are some symptoms are more important, some are less important, some are negligible or very common. We, the homeopaths, wants qualitative totality that may be particular to general or general to particular. Particular to general, this method was introduced by Dr. Bonning Hussain. In this method, the symptoms are arranged on the basis of location, sensation, modalities, and concomitant, and thus develop a distinct and definite picture of the individual case. But this method takes a recourse to too much regeneration and analogy and thus suitable where there is paucity of characteristic general symptoms. But with prominent but scattered, that is significantly present in some parts but vague in other parts, modalities and concomitants, and in cases with complete symptoms. Another is general to particular Kantian concept. This method was introduced by Dr. J.T. Kane. He has classified symptom into general particular and common to understand the person, part and disease respectively. Dr. Kane, in his lecture on homeopathic philosophy and mathematica, has emphasized the importance of knowing the man's love and hates, desires and aversions. He points out the loves and hates or desires and aversions are the deepest mental symptoms. What make the totality of a case are mental, physical, general and characteristic particulars. Now let us come clinical. The cases presents only with pathologies. The different nosological terms are to be selected as main, as main rubric for repertorization. Like diabetes with debility, 
diabetes with gouty symptoms, diabetes with motobiasis. Thus, clinical departures can be used successfully in cases where clinical conditions mark the characteristics of the patient and present with some prominent common symptoms with few modalities and concomitants. Note prescription. Different Stalwart has used this term in different way. Dr. Hanneman in section 153, characteristic symptom, that is striking, singular, uncommon, peculiar symptom. Dr. C. Constant, Constantine Herring, guiding symptom. Dr. Lippi, red line symptom. Dr. Boric, determinative symptom. Dr. Gantz is keynote symptom. Lippe is the master of keynote prescriber. On the basis of etiological factor. Another case I would like to present here to understand this etiological factor. If the etiological factor is more, is good, very important, is a strong etiology, if we get a strong etiology in any case, depending on that etiology, we can prescribe. A human admitted in our hospital, that is DN Dehavati Medical College and Hospital IPD, Kolkata, from remote village of West Bengal with frozen shoulder with unbearable pain. No acute medicine is acting. After taking history of the present complaint, in detail, she said that before 10 years, when she was went to field with her cow for grassing, the she unfortunately fell down with the strings of the cow. From then, she had mild aching pain and taken some ritual uh, treatment, but that suddenly aggravated since last six or seven days. Considering the etiology, this is strong etiology, she was prescribed Arnica Montana 1M, one dose in sugar of milk. And after a few days, her pain and restricted movement of the shoulder joint cured. The excellence in homeopathic prescription can be achieved only by selecting similimum and adequate planning and programming the treatment in every individual case. And in these cases, the reportees become a wonderful tool. But before reputation, we have to consider some factors, that is analysis of the case, analysis of the patient, and analysis of the repertoire results. During case taking, we registered many, many symptoms like present complaint, past troubles, family history, and we try to form a tentative diagnosis along with the position of the case, either acute or chronic, soda, simply psychosis or mixed. We also ask for other physical generals but for the purpose of reproduction, we only cite up a few out of many. Perfectness of the symptoms is very important. Careful to detect the symptom as per age, sex, and state of the patient. Each and every symptom should be scrutinized and analyzed regarding the common and uncommon, and we, the homeopath, consider the uncommon mostly. Perfectness of the symptom. The second point analysis is to find out exact and best suitable medicine. Suppose you have got three patients from different provinces, one from West Bengal of India, another from Madras of India, and other from Uttar Pradesh in India. All have craving for fish, meat, sour, chili, and sweet. Will you consider all these desires for each and every person equally? Patients coming from Madras, desire for sour is a common symptom. Patients coming from Uttar, uh, uh, from Uttar Pradesh, desire for panjin, chilies, is a common symptom. Patients coming from West Bengal, desire for sweet, is a common symptom. Again, patient coming from West Bengal, a young girl of about 15 to, 15 to 20 years old, Desire for sweet is a common symptom. Uh, desire for sour is a common symptom. Desire for sour. So we have to analyze this symptom uh, exact and best suitable for medicine. Again, another thing we have to consider is the interpretation of the rubrics. The physician should have 
good interpreting capacity. And that comes when the physician has vast knowledge in repertory as well as in mathematical. Suppose the patient narrates that I feel that I will get diarrhea. One will find in Kent's repertory abdomen sensation as if diarrhea would occur. Actually, the patient is not suffering from diarrhea. There is a sensation as if diarrhea would occur. Another patient is, uh, is uh, narrating that I am a beggar and I close my eyes during begging. That beggar closes his eyes because he is not blind. He is feigning. He is feigning. So, rubric will be mind, blindness, pretending to. So, before the production, if we don't interpret the, the, uh, rubrics, uh, the uh, result will be each and every symptom should be scrutinized and analyzed regarding the common and uncommon. And we, the homeopaths, always consider the uncommon. I wish to share two cases, though they are not related with the upper respiratory infection, but I like to share to the uh, in this uh, uh, learn uh, in this uh, important platform uh, uh, as because what homeopathy can do. One case of polyp in vocal cord. Polyp in vocal cord. Tobacco smoker, stitching pain in larynx, pain compel him to lie on back. Voice low, rather hoarseness. Very much headstrong, music causes weeping, aggravates at night. History of vaccination regular and rapid emaciation. He was a regional manager of a deputed nationalized bank in West Bengal, had to deal hundreds of people daily, but seeking for words when in conversation. Came to me in my hospital outdoor, that is DN the Hobidi Medical College outdoor, and he was treating this uh, polyp in vocal cord in a reputed government hospital in West Bengal and they, try, they, they, they decided to uh, take the uh, help of the surgeon. Considering all these symptoms, we have given that patient Thuja and within one month Rapid improvement was happened, and two or three months that polyp was subsided, uh, and the patient uh, never come again. Another case, very, very, very important case, uh, uh, unusual case, a uh, buccal mucosal ulcer. Patient was admitted to a um, reputed cancer hospital, uh, and according to the patient's attendant version, they told that the hospital told them that the case is inoperable and the patient will uh, will die within two or three months. So you need not to um, uh, stay in the hospital and they want to release the patient. And ultimately, the patient was released in September 2019. And through one of my beloved student, that patient came to me in December, in December uh, uh, 2019. And the uh, diagnosis was CARMT, retromolar trigon left sided. And that is inoperable, medically inoperable. The chest was normal. Patient was returned back to Badwan and consulted me on December 2019. Complete loss of voice, difficult breathing, especially while ascending. Cough aggravates ascending stairs. Trying to answer questions but cannot. Lean and thin, gradually uh, becoming um, uh, lean and thin. Pale, dirty looking, saliva offensive, profuse salivation, tongue indented. Moist, heavy, cannot hold urine, frequent maturation. 
I have given Moxal 30 two dose infection. And then the COVID situation become bad to worse. In 2020, I think February uh, of 2020, uh, uh, COVID situation was very bad and the patient and uh, did not come for uh, for nine months. After nine months, that patient came to me, and astonishingly, I uh, observed that the patient, truly speaking, there is no ulcer and leading normal life. This is the miracle of homeopathy. Another case of cough. Complaint of dry cup for last three years. He had taken all sorts of treatment in the modern allopathic hospital and even taken homeopathic treatment without any permanent relief. During the case taking, her wife told, Doctor, my husband is having mania. He starts coughing on seeing me or my daughter while watching TV alone. After taking the case, I prescribed a medicine um, like, like Alcanfos, uh, so far I um, remember. After two weeks, the old man came along and reported of not having any marked improvement. During this, reconsidering the case, he told doctor, I don't have any mania. I will not cough if I am alone in the room. But if anybody enters in the room, I start coughing. On hearing such a queer symptom, I immediately looked into the chapter cough in my case repertory. Cough, persons other than into room aggravates. The, the patient was cured with a single mm -hmm. dose of the first plus 200. Another case of pain in the ear. A 10 to 15, 10 to 12 years old male baby, male boy was uh, um, brought to me with severe pain in both ears. And that boy um, during uh, asking, he, he, he told me that, uh, that doctor, I think this, my, my ear is uh, heavy like stone, stony hardness of the uh, both ear. Considering that symptom, I prescribed Tenacitum vulgaris. And I don't have to repeat. Another important case of cough. He is also uh, uh, working as sub inspector in the West Bengal Police. And as is a uh, defense personnel, he repeat, repeatedly ad took admission in the police hospital for that cough for long two to three years, but not cured. Came to me, I given her, him uh, so many medicines, but <clears throat> result is new. One day that patient is um, telling me that, uh, doctor, I have a peculiar feeling, sensation. I think that during when I, I, I am coughing, I think, that the cuff comes from my chest to the throat, just uh, from, it comes through a hollow cylinder. Only depending on that symptom, I prescribed osmium. This is also, uh, the patient has not come. Another case of cuff, a young lady about 20 to 22 years old came to me uh, for gallbladder stone, and after he uh, he took admission for operation. At that time, um, microsurgery was not so developed. My practicing uh, experiences for three years since 1985. In the early, this is a case of in my early practice, and and laparoscopy done, the stone removed. But as soon as he came to the bed from OT, cuff starts. And the consulting surgeon changed two to three cuff syrup, but no result. That surgeon was very close to me. He told me 
that have you any medicine have you any medicine uh, to treat the case otherwise that will be fatal the cup we are not controlling the cup this post operative cup i prescribed a strontium curve 200 infection dose day after just after uh, the operation uh, next day uh, the surgeon told me that after giving your medicine gradually cough subsides this is post operative cough Time is very short. I don't know go in the details uh, like types of cup. There are so many cups, weight cup, protein cup, etc. Nervous cup, chronic cup. Now, regarding the treatment of cup, we have to consider that time factor is very important. In which time the cup is the cup is uh, coming uh, starting at morning or at daytime or only at daytime, day and night, etc. etc. After bathing, cup calcium Cup at morning after rising and evening after lying down. Fusa. Cup only at evening. As soon as going to sleep. Cunium, hipper salve, ignatia, lyco. Mother, the baby will come to you and will tell you that as soon as the baby closing closing his uh, eyes, cup starts. If you took up the baby in your lap, cup subsided. So this is this is this is the cup of high summers. High summers, huh? when you uh, took the baby in your lap. Cup subsides, and um, uh, when he is in the bed, uh, cup starts. I have already told you that cup, as soon as it touches the pillow, in cancer body, there are three medicines capsicum, conium, and drosera. Cup during sleep, I have told already, sabadilla in tonsillitis. The very important medicine. Difficulty begins on left side. And extends to right. Pain is worse on empty swallowing and is relieved by warm days. Another medicine is amygdala, tamara. Dark rate of the forces on evula and tonsil with sharp pain causing considerable difficulty in swallowing. Sometimes they are so severe as to make the child cry out. Amygdala. Ignatian tonsillitis. Incision as though there were a plug in, in the throat. Words when not swallowing. Examining the tonsil, we find them started with small superficial ulcers having a yellowish white color. Barrett curve in tonsillitis. Tendency to tonsillitis, particularly in scrofulous children with dry scarf on the head. Calcary iod, very important medicine for throat pain, tonsillitis, is similar to barita cup in some cases with enlarged glands, particularly when there are enlarged tonsils filled with little pockets. Calcary iod is similar to barita, sorry. Hmm. Children who always play with the water. Cough for daytime and more at night with fever. This is mephitis. Cough, smoker's cough with tingling in epiglottis, with burning in inspiration, in, in respiratory tract, with you. There is a difference in case of child when uh, cough during sleep is hysemus. In case of elderly people, Cups during sleep, we'll see that in that uh, that uh, hyshamas enlargement of the evola. But if there is in if there is um, swelling of the 
फाइनेंशियल लिम नोट फाइनेंशियल ग्लैंड देर इज वेथ कप विथ म्यूकोफूड एंड सिक्रीशन एसोसिएट विथ कंप्लीट एफोनिया कैलियर्स हिमोप्टिस विथ सप्रेस मेन्सेज सेनिशो और Cold senses in larynx on breathing, brobium. Childrens with dry cough, with vomiting, aggravates at night, hot drinks, mesodium in fatal spectrophotica. Constriction feeling in larynx after anger, sulphur, after drinking arsenic, after eating pulsatilla on swallowing digitalis. Breathing distress during whooping cough, brobium. Now, I'd like to mention a few important rubric in, in related to upper uh, uh, respiratory tract infection, like nose obstruction, alternate thing with size, like caninum, nax vomica, nursing infants, like opodium, nax vomica, cali by by vomica, rising from bed amulets, lying amulets, marks mercurius, opening eyes, graphitis. Sleep during awake symptom am 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 on mute. In initial clinical research, suggest that homeopathic treatment may be effective in reducing symptom and duration of upper respiratory tract infection in pediatric age group. At present, there is little data on the effect of Individualized homeopathic treatment and prevention of upper respiratory tract infection in children in India. Case of depression. Time for this. Time for this. Right? Sir, it is. Uh, sir, uh, our time is. Uh... Already over, and we can have a, some a discussion because a lot of people so, have doubts. So, uh, uh, um, I, 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 I would like to conclude my uh, speech uh, remembering Dr. Constantine Herring. If we give up the basic principle of homeopathy, we are lost in reserve, only to be mentioned caricature in the history of medicine. Thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. It's really a very good session. But nowadays, a lot of acute cases are coming to every homeopath because this is an area where homeopathic doctors can build their career because the acute diseases are the one that really uh, makes a doctor. Uh, uh, well known to the public as well as he can establish himself as a, a physician, like a doctor, as a pediatrician, whatever may be. Uh, but uh, your presentation, your, your method of prescription, uh, everything uh, uh, is dedicated to Hanumanian principle. And uh, usually people struggle to get the right remedy, but you have mentioned beautifully how you can choose even from a very single symptom uh, the cup, uh, while just before sleep or some um, sometime later or even cover during day or cover uh, as soon as uh, on uh, wake in the morning so uh, this kind of presentations are really the need of the hour because we have to uh, promote homeopathy and we have to establish ourselves as good doctors and we have and uh, one other thing i i have noted that you have even mentioned about how this strong sin carb worked uh, during uh, the, uh, after the post-operative surgery, and all those things are really uh, very good uh, presentation, uh, very good uh, uh, knowledge sharing uh, things are. So let us begin the session uh, with uh, discussion. And those who want to participate in discussion may raise your hand so that we will allow you to con speak or have a chat with uh, uh, our Mahidin sir. Uh, sir, uh, what's your opinion on this? Uh, 
uh, post uh, covid cough Sorry? I, uh, usually i uh, when a patient comes to you after allopathic treatment and uh, 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 for or otherwise uh, a patient is uh, being treated by some homeopath and not getting the relief then how will you manage the case sir i have seen in my practice that a patient coming from allopaths you can treat very easily but exactly. it's a patient coming from homeopath with uh, uh, with a polyprescriber who has given two or three or four or five percent. Uh, I have seen in repeated cases that the exact patient's picture, we, we don't get exact patient picture. So, so as per Dr. Kent, Dr. Kent in his mathematics, he told that a homeopathic medicine prescribed from a homeopathic file is not homeopathy until the basic principle of homeopathy is maintained. So at first, we have to obey the basic principle. And I, I, can, I can cite, the time is very short, I can cite you number of cases, how the, the beautiful the, uh, cases um, cured by only single medicine uh, uh, given to, uh, to them. So, uh, we have to treat the patient based maintaining the basic principles of homeopathy. Not only prescription is, um, is is very bad. We cannot cure a patient with with poly prescription. We can palliate the case, but we cannot. Um, in my last forty years of practice, I have never used two medicine at a time. I have given only one medicine. Uh, I, I I I practice in a in industrial belt industrial belt and. Uh, I I need not to give two medicine at a time. This is this, this is my um, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, for example, uh, when a patient uh, come to uh, uh, come after allopathic treatment, they are suppressing the uh, patient uh, disease uh, symptoms uh, with their me medicine, particularly antibiotic, and those conditions. The picture of the patient is entirely different from the natural disease. So uh, we will have. Uh, uh, whether uh, you start with uh, uh, medicine and either sometimes we have to or, wait for no of course and... we have to wait for for some time we have to wait uh, and in these cases patients have, have to show their patients uh, so um, uh, I have seen that patient coming from allopathic doctors if I got characteristic symptoms from the patient uh, and definitely that person occurs. I I may I, I may uh, uh, I may uh, cite one case of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. In according to our uh, allopathic friends, this is the autoimmune disease. Rheumatoid arthritis cannot be cured. But I have seen in my practice that that one one um, six, fifteen or sixteen years old uh, boy uh, uh, suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, 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 was cured uh, by uh, by uh, only giving sulfur. Uh, uh, and then yes. from, and yes. I have seen a very beauty Yes, sir. Uh, that's, why I, that's why I asked us. Uh, some people, uh, uh, in the beginning itself, uh, some people used to give uh, sulfur and some other people used to give tuberculum uh, uh, in those conditions, particularly complicated cases coming from allopathic treatment. And uh, that's why I asked such a question, sir. And anyway, uh, for example, uh, when a patient comes to you with the, the extreme uh, intensity, the extreme uh, tiredness, as well as uh, the patient is in a drowsy state, we can give anti tart as a specific. Uh, that is a typical picture of anti tart. Uh, we, we, we need not to look into any, any of the symptoms of the patient because the, the child is in extra, extra collapse condition and they're having intense heat and she is having. Uh, she or he may be uh, treated by some other people and in and, and the fever threatening pneumonia that is the condition in those conditions uh, and in that can be given and that will cure with a single dose of medicine that the, 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 there won't be pneumonia the patient will back to health in the shortest possible time what is your opinion on that uh, sir whatever may be the case you have to maintain the basic principles otherwise homeopathic cure will not be 
Uh, exactly, sir. We have seen so many times that such a, such cures happens with a single uh, dose of homeopathic medicine in, and uh, in pneumonia cases. In some uh, cases, in some cases, repetition is, uh, are needed. Uh, but but medicine should be single. Repetition is required in some cases. Uh, um, infection dose. Uh, uh, that, that is possible. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it is the time is about to finish, and I invite uh, Dr. Ram uh, to say a word of thanks to this session. Uh, and uh, uh, tomorrow we will have a presentation from uh, Dr. Srikant Talwari, and he will he is he is, to, uh, he is talking about uh, uh, one of the another big subject uh, that is uh, art and skills of case taking. That is also something similar to the same presentation by our Mohidin Sir. So uh, please unmute uh, Dr. Ramparesa and say a lot of thanks to the session. Thank you, Dr. Vaidhi Sir. Excellent session. This party track is many kinds of good medicine. Use a single remedy. Thank you. Very, very, very thanks. Very, very thanks on the behalf of IFPS. Thank you, sir. Again, in IFPS presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, uh, please share your number uh, in this forum so that we, uh, those who want to uh, share, uh, have a chat with you can chat directly to you, sir. Uh, please give your number on the chat box. Uh, okay, sir. And uh, you want to say anything more, sir? Please unmute, sir. Please unmute. You are muted, sir. You are muted, sir. We cannot see. Please unmute. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, my number is nine four double three seven. Sir, please wait, sir. Uh, one minute, one minute, sir. We want to say. Uh, uh, sir, and nine. Nine four. Uh, double three seven. Two four nine double seven. Two four. May I repeat? May I repeat? Nine ah, yes, four. Sir. Double three seven oh. two four nine double seven. Nine. And nine four double three seven seven two. Seven two. Ah, uh, seven two. Four nine. Four nine double seven. Double seven. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, this is the kind of present we want you. Uh, uh, we want some more uh, some more presentation from you, sir, because these kind of presentations are really good for homeopathic doctors.